now we are going to discuss the practice of civil engineering under civil engineering laws and ethics discussion so what is civil engineering as what um, you had learned from your C11 or C civil engineering orientation civil engineering is a professional engineering discipline that deals with the design construction and maintenance of the physical and naturally built environment including public works such as roads bridges canals dams airports sewage systems pipelines structural components of buildings and railways it is considered as the second engineering discipline after military engineering and it is defined to distinguish non-military engineering from military engineering so civil engineering can take place in the public sector from municipal public works departments through to federal government agencies and in the private sector from locally based firms to global fortune 500 companies so what is global fortune 500 companies it is also known as global 500 which is an annual ranking of the top 500 corporations worldwide as measured by revenue the list is compiled and published annually by fortune magazine so be, um, upon reading in this um, definition it means that civil engineering has a wide range of job opportunities um, either locally or abroad so the practice of civil engineering generally for the full practice of civil engineering we have to refer to Republic Act 544, which is an act to regulate the practice of civil engineering in the Philippines. In this act, it is defined that the practice of civil engineering within the meaning and intent of this act shall embrace services in the form of consultation, design, preparation of plans, specifications, estimates, erection, installation and supervision of the construction of streets, bridges, highways, railroads, airports and hangars, port works, canals, river and shore improvements, lighthouses and dry docks, buildings, big structures for irrigation, flood protection, drainage, water supply and sewerage works, demolition of permanent structures and tunnels. So the enumeration of any work in this section shall not be construed as excluding any other work requiring civil engineering knowledge and application. In most countries, a bachelor's degree in engineering represents for the first towards professional, the first step. So the bachelor's degree is the first step towards being a professional or towards getting professional certification. And the professional body certifies the degree program. After completing a certified degree program, the engineer must satisfy a range of requirements including work experience and exam requirements before being certified. Once certified, the engineer is designated as a professional engineer that is in the United States, Canada, and South Africa or being called as a chartered engineer in most Commonwealth countries or referred as chartered professional engineer in Australia and New Zealand or a European engineer in most countries of the European Union. With us in civil engineering in the Philippines, for us to become a civil registered civil engineer or RCE, first is you have to complete the bachelor's degree 
which is the college uh, program. Previously, the, the number of years to complete uh, in College of Engineering was five years, but right now in the new curriculum, you will be completing it only for four years and then do the on-the-job training. After graduating the bachelor's degree, you should pass the licensure exam given by the Professional Regulation Commission. And some students will do the review of a, before taking the exam, but those who are already confident, uh, uh, it is also okay not to take the review and they'll just do their self-review. But these are the things that you really need to do in order for you to become a registered civil engineer. And uh, after there are professionals or there are registered civil engineers who wanted to become, um, uh, or wanted to proceed in the Master of Civil Engineering. So what are the perks of getting a master of civil engineering first is um after college uh because this is the first or the basic requirement that you must um uh, be a graduate of um the, the bachelor of science in civil engineering then you can proceed in getting a master's degree the perks of having Masters of Civil Engineering is that you can get uh, promotions in work or the promotion of your current position. And then if you want to teach in the College of Engineering of any universities, um, the basic requirement also for you to be eligible to teach is uh, that you must have a degree or you must have a master's degree of civil engineering if not then you cannot teach in the college of engineering of any universities then why does um, registered civil engineers um, decided to proceed to be in getting phd or doctor of civil engineering um, this is mainly for leadership opportunities. Actually, uh, many jobs in civil engineering only require uh, bachelor's or master's degree. So a PhD won't necessarily increase one's income or your income or chance of earning a position. However, it can set you up for a leadership opportunities. For example, if you want to become a president of Suleiman University, one of the requirements is that you must have a PhD or a doctorate degree of your profession before you will qualify uh, to be nominated as like president of the university. So what are the benefits of being a registered civil engineer? In the United States and Canada, only licensed professional engineers may prepare signs and seal and submit engineering plans and drawings to a public authority for approval or seal engineering work for public and private clients. In the Philippines, the same thing is applied. So even if you graduated in civil engineering course, but if you haven't passed a licensure exam for civil engineering conducted by PRC, then you cannot sign and seal, seal any civil engineering work or blueprint plans. This also means that you will expect to have a lower salary rate, but um, it does not it does not stop you from working uh, civil engineering related jobs. It, only um, means that you cannot sign and seal and then you cannot expect higher salary rate. Then what are the laws applied for civil engineering practice? Engineers must obey contract law in their contractual relationships with other parties. It's either to an employer or to a client. Then in cases where an engineer's work fails, they may be subject to the law of tort of negligence. And in extreme cases, they might be charged with 
criminal charges. So an engineer's work must also comply with numerous other rules and regulations such as building codes and environmental law. That is why in our other discussions and in your other subjects, especially in, um, especially in your civil engineering uh, orientation and mostly in CE51, that you are um, taught on what are the codes and environmental law applied for civil engineering. Now, civil engineering is actually tra is traditionally broken into a number of sub-disciplines and we have 13. These are coastal engineering, construction engineering, earthquake engineering, environmental engineering, forensic engineering, geotechnical engineering, Master Science and Engineering, a Material Science and Engineering, Site Development and Planning, Structural Engineering, Surveying, Transportation Engineering, Municipal or Urban Engineering, and Water Resources Engineering. So actually, if you want to proceed Masters of Civil Engineering, you can, uh, you have the option to proceed into either any of these sub-disciplines of civil engineering as long as you graduated the bachelor's degree of civil engineering and um, to continue with this discussion of sub-disciplines of civil engineering you may check on our next video discussion that is all thank you